So I'm actually going to uh, play this at uh, basically double speed. So if you don't notice any weirdness, it might just be because I've got it on double speed. But what I'm showing off here is I'm placing down a manoeuvre node. You might uh, recognize this a little bit from, uh, from games like KSP. I'm actually going to use that manoeuvre node basically as a mark for when I want to do my uh, 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 capture burn. Um, you can actually, as it is, warp to it and use the manoeuvre node to set up your flight plan. Uh, but I've actually just been having a lot of fun by actually doing them myself. And that's actually one of the things that we really want to do in game development. We call it sort of finding the fun. Uh, so I've been enjoying it, so I'm actually just going to do that. So I've warped to that manoeuvre node now, setting up my SAS uh, so that I'm in pro grade. Uh, and I'm actually going to do that burn. You can just see that appearing. What's really cool is that that burn is actually happening using our orbit solvers. So the physics uh, and all the stuff for that is actually being done uh, as part of our whole Kepler uh, simulation. We don't have to use physics or anything like that, uh, and which means that we don't have to make any of those concessions. And we've really completely decoupled that simulation from any context of rendering or anything like that. That means that we can have vehicles anywhere inside our simulation doing things. Maybe a KOS script is controlling them or anything like that. Uh, they can be sort of anywhere in the simulation being acted on or having things change. And that really cuts to that idea of seamlessness that we want to bring and things like that. So you can see I'm just about to get captured here. I've got captured by Luna. Uh, and I'm basically going to come in here and circularize myself around Luna. I've really had a lot of fun by seeing how close I can actually get my uh, orbit to the surface of Luna. Uh, even at this point, it's, it's just been a heck of a lot of fun to do, so I've had a lot of fun doing it. Again, my burns that I'm doing there are being spread across multiple frames, uh, which is fantastic. And essentially, we actually do a bunch of magic to sort of take the vehicle off rails, make all our calculations. This is all happening on worker threads while you're playing the game, and the results of them are getting applied at the beginning of the next frame. This gives us the tremendous ability to scale, and scale is something we think is very important. You're being able to jump in and out of any vehicle to anywhere, uh, being able to have vehicles that are still being acted on by forces, it opens up a whole bunch of propulsion options. Uh, you know, obviously in real life, uh, a lot of uh, burns and things like that are, are not necessarily just very instant. So, so not having to make any of those concessions there is super important. So I'm just trying to see if I can tweak uh, my orbit here so I can get nice and in close uh, to Luna. Uh, one thing you will notice as I'm zipping down over the surface uh, of the moon is that we do still have some work to do, well actually quite a bit of work that we want to do on the train, but there's a lot of levers that we can pull with that. So one of the things that we're not doing is we're not properly self-shadowing using the height, uh, so the mountains and the craters, that leaves it looking a bit flat, you can see in there. And we actually need multiple levels of uh, what's called detail textures. I was actually even thinking that we might try to do sort of a detail height map texture as well. Um, I've been watching some real life footage and I actually think there's a few tricks we can do in there. So I think you can expect to see a bit of progress on there and there's some things that we really, you know, would kind of like to do as part of that too. But I definitely think the big takeaway at this point uh, I might actually just circularize us and uh, see if we can take us back um, out of the moon sphere of influence back into Earth's. But I really think that big takeaway is that as I'm doing these burns or these RCS changes, that these are completely decoupled from the rendering. So these could be happening on that craft even if I'm not looking at it or I've got a little window with a separate camera available on it and I really think that that's going to open up a lot of opportunities. Uh, I might start my, well I started my burn thinking that I wouldn't get, uh, uh, I wouldn't get recaptured by the moon but it appears I might have burnt a bit much so I'll just ease it back a bit there and uh, get myself in. Miss using the warp, I'm sure we've all done this several times. Um, I should really not be lazy here and place a maneuver node but I apparently forgot to do that so uh, I'm not going to edit it out because I'm sure every KSP player will have, uh, will have done that before. 
So at this point, uh, I'm going to circularize myself around uh, around Earth. Again, just want to emphasize the really cool part of that is that that physics is still being done by our uh, orbit solver uh, threads um, and really um, is completely decoupled and I don't have to be like in a sphere of influence or around the vehicle or something like that. This time I'm going to be a little smarter and I'm going to actually use a maneuver load. Look at that, I'm actually learning to warp to uh, so that I can um, uh, so that I can actually um, circularize myself nicely basically around Earth. Uh, what I might do in some of our future videos as well is show off uh, just doing this with a interplanetary transfer which would be really cool although I think uh, Jamie's actually working on some tools to maybe make that a bit easier because for testing purposes it's actually proving um, to be a little difficult 